John Wolseth is a community development specialist with Iowa State University Extension and Outreach. He holds a PhD in cultural anthropology from the University of Iowa and a master's in community and regional planning from Iowa State. Prior research projects include studying community factors in preventing youth and gang violence in Honduras and the street culture of homeless and working children and youth in the Dominican Republic. Wolseth uses his skills as an anthropologist to amplify the voices of underrepresented audiences in com community development initiatives. His work with ISU Extension focuses specifically on the intersection of housing and civic engagement. Dr. Wilson. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here this morning with all of you. Um, I wanna give you a little bit of background about, uh, since many of you may not be familiar with what uh, the Extension system is and why we're here at the Land Grant in Institution, what that means for the work that we're able to do in community and economic development. And then I'll, I'll hand it over to, uh, to David Vega, who was one of our interns in, a, in the program that we'll be describing. So uh, as the land-grant institution, we have a history that goes back to about 1858 uh, that uh, developed a way of bringing the educational resources of the university to, and that time, to farmers, primarily, and farming communities. Uh, and that work is, has uh, developed over time to be more than just technical resources in agriculture and more than just um, uh, ways to best cook and store your, your and can your beans um, over, uh, over the history of, of the Extension Service. So we're lucky at Iowa to be one of the few uh, robust community and economic development extension services in the United States. Um, and as the population of Iowa has changed, so too has the focus of our work changed and who we work with in across the state. Uh, about, it's been a little over a decade ago now, uh, our former director, Dr. Tim Boric, uh, reached out to hire a, a position um, who, and, who was my colleague, Imar Hernandez, uh, to work specifically with small business development uh, and immigrant entrepreneurs in the state. And so over the course of, of approximately 12 years, Imar had been working uh, based out of Otumwa in the southeast part of the, of the state and driving all over the place like a madman, working with uh, immigrant business owners to provide them with the, the needed resources to improve and expand their businesses. Um, about five years ago, we were able to expand that reach through a grant program from the Vice President of Extension and Outreach at that time, Dr. Kathan Kress. Um, this initiative brought myself on and my colleague Jill Sockness in Sioux City and my colleague Victor Oyovedes, uh, who was at that time based in Muscatine and West Liberty. Uh, we were tasked to also go out and to continue this work and expand uh, the, the sort of the scope of the work that we do to other areas of community development, uh, not just small business development. Uh, that program, that grant, it was a five-year uh, granting program. It ended, uh, and we were all sort of um, told to continue to do the focus work that we had been doing, but also to amplify and the types of communities that we were working with in the state. So we went from having four dedicated FTEs um, to down to about two and a half by the way we sort of map out the way that we do our work across the state. Uh, we were able to work with um, a, the Vice President of Extension, the current Vice President of Extension and Outreach, Dr. John Lawrence, uh, had been continuing an internship program to involve college students at ISU into the Extension Service to sort of show the breadth and work that we do um, across the state. Uh, but that involvement had been limited to a certain number of colleges, the College of Design being one of them, um, College of Human Sciences being another. And the partnership hadn't really developed uh, to include students that were uh, majoring in uh, the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. And so uh, Dr. Suarez was, uh, was able to approach uh, myself and, and uh, my supervisor, uh, Gary Taylor, about how can we expand this program and incorporate uh, more students across campus. In particular, how can we reach um, and get more students of color to be involved in extension and the, the research project or the extension projects that we're doing through the internship program. Um, so it ended up being a win-win. Uh, we were able to get 
funding from uh, Dr. Lawrence and the, um, extent, the Vice President for Extension and Outreach, as well as a partnership through the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, as well as uh, the USLS department, uh, all sort of together to have a, this three-year pilot program uh, that is geared towards working with three students who are minoring in USLS to become uh, interns through our ex extension program and to go out and do community development work. Um, so this past year was our pilot. Uh, David, for better or for worse, got to uh, got to ride the roller coaster of how we were going to do this. Um, and uh, I think I couldn't have asked for a, a better group of, of, of interns to begin the process with us. Uh, David worked with his colleagues, uh, Casey Berry and Anlis Mercado Rios, both who could not be here this year, today because they are both studying outside of campus. Uh, Casey is in Spain and Casades right now studying abroad, and Anlis is doing a semester in Indiana, um, so they could not join us today. Um, but uh, the long and the short of it is, is with um, students who had very little formal community development background we're able to work with partner organizations um, in, in Des Moines and Perry in the spring semester and then in the residential program um, for approximately two months in Sioux City uh, to carry off some very complex community development uh, programming. And um, David is going to talk more about uh, the results of some of the work that he did. So David, I get to turn it over to you. Hello, my name is David Vega. Uh... A little background about myself. I'm originally from Houston, Texas, and my parents are from San Luis Potosi, Mexico. So I, I got involved with this opportunity because I took a Latino studies class with Ms. Myers, and the opportunity was presented during that class. And I felt like being from Houston, I had always had diversity with me. And for the first time, I didn't when I, come, I came to Iowa. And even though Iowa has all this diversity, I, I was not aware of how much there was here in Iowa State, let alone small towns like Perry. So it was kind of eye-opening to me to go, to go to these places and find out these Latino communities existed and how much they thrived and that there was culture there. So it was a lot of fun doing this internship. So like Dr. Walsett said, we, there was two parts during the spring semester. I worked with the city of Perry to try to increase Latino participation for the census. And during the summer, me, Anlis, and Casey also worked in Sioux City for a business needs assessment, which I'll get to in a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. And for, this, for the census portion during the spring semester, I was, over, I was able to carry it, my experience over to the summer. And what I was doing was I was focused on researching background information about the census, which if you don't know, it's coming up. <laughs> and meeting with people who are willing and able to improve the messaging for the census and why it was important for the Latino community in specific. Um, and as well as getting to know local leaders in the community and then hopefully creating an action plan for the 2020 census and helping improve overall participation. So the reason why it's so important for Latinos uh, is because so much funding comes from the census that help out Latinos like who are underprivileged or I, I don't know the other word, poor, uh, sorry. Uh, but uh, people like myself who uh, growing up, I always had my mom filled out every paper that she knew would get us any kind of funding. I, I, I recall her asking us to translate what things meant on a Medicare form or if we wanted free to reduce lunch, she would ask us, you know, turn in these papers because she knew it was important and she knew that's how we were going to eat or that's how we were going to get our funding. And now I, throughout this internship, I learned so much about how Latinos perceive what the census is. Most people don't know what the census is and new immigrants don't really know that there is a census. So getting out there in the community and learning what people thought about the census and informing them why it's important for them to fill it out and how much funding comes from that was pretty eye-opening and, and a nice experience to learn what Latino communities here in Iowa thought. And um, next slide. 
And what I learned through all this is communication skills. Before this, I hadn't really emailed anyone to set up an appointment or called or co-called people to get to know somebody in the community. And it was a lot of me walking around town, especially Perry, of just asking around who, who do you think is a Latino community leader? And most people don't really give a second thought about who a Latino community leader is because there is already leaders in the community. So it was a lot of getting to know people who thought, getting to know people who knew other people who knew who were involved. <laughs> so it was a lot of asking around. It was, a, it, was, it was fun to get to know these people and why they started caring about certain issues and why they got involved. And I got to see what kind of character, what kind of um, personality and characters become these leaders. Uh, What, what I hope to achieve is to get, get more participation for the census. And honestly, I hope to achieve a complete count committee, which is a committee focused on um, developing engagement for the census. For Perry, I was not able to do it because of the I only had a spring semester. And it was every, every couple of weeks, I was able to go actually into Perry. While in Sioux City, I had a whole summer, and I was able to adapt a community and even hold be a part of the first meeting. So I was pretty proud about that. A lot of people care about what the census is and the fact that these immigrant populations might be undercounted and we might lose millions of dollars to that. Um, during the summer, me and Lisa and Casey also worked on the business needs assessment, which if you don't know what a business needs assessment, it's perfectly fine. I didn't either before this. And it's basically what it is, is trying to find out what uh, businesses need or what businesses are missing or and what they utilize currently. And what we mainly focused on was small Latino businesses. So new, uh, well, we were in Sioux City for a while and trying to find just any Latino business who we can other see like a brick and mortar or trying to find other ones like construction or moving companies or anything that a Latino would be able to do or would want to start their business in. And we got to talk to a lot of business owners and find out how they started their business, why they started their business. And it was very interesting to see what challenges they faced. Uh, one of the ones that's always an issue is the language barrier. Uh, asking for help is pretty difficult if you can't even speak another language and know what you're asking for. So that was one of the most one of the more prevalent issues that came about. Another issue was funding, where they would get their money. And that was very interesting to find out too. It's the small Latino businesses used a lot of crowdsourcing. I think most people understand. If a Latino wants to start their business, they can ask their family for money. And that's how they start their business. They also are very, like Latinos are very resourceful in the fact that if, you want to get something done, you can ask your cousin who works in painting to paint your shop. And then your other cousin who's an electrician to install your wires. So it was very interesting to find out how Latinos didn't use the typical system to, in order to start their business, but went about a different way of doing it. And and it's not, well, they're, while doing this, we also found like a disconnect between how the regular system is and how Latinos make their business and why that disconnect was there. So <laughs> it was pretty interesting because there is a way of making your own business here in America. And Latinos don't typically f do it that way, but they are still successful. And I, uh, it was very interesting to find that out. As I give an example, you typically have to have a business model or a business plan in order to get a loan from a bank. Latinos weren't doing that. <laughs> they were crowdsourcing, asking their family and friends for the money. So they were getting their money from their family and friends instead of from a local bank, which means they never make a business or business model. So they were in, how do I say it, an unbeaten path. So they were making their success from a way that typically isn't made that way. And some of these companies and businesses were chains so they've branched out into chains and eventually they did get they did go back into the banks and ask for loans but that was only after not 
needing him in the first place. So we got to learn a lot of that. And, uh, <coughs> and what we mainly did is we interviewed business owners. We conducted background research to find out where the most Latino businesses were in Sioux City. And it was pretty interesting in that sense as well, because South Sioux City was right across the border. And they had a Latino population of their own who had way more businesses, but there were still businesses in Sioux City which were thriving, but it was very interconnected, especially since Sioux City is a tri-state area. So even North Sioux City, which is in South Dakota, was involved in some of the stuff. So finding that mixture of, diff of how everything connected was really interesting. Yes. <laughs> Appreciate it. And we all learned about how to create this business needs assessment as we were doing it. So Casey Berry and Elise really, really helped me out. We all worked together in order to write this paper. And it was long and it was, <laughs> we spent a whole two days just writing it out, writing everything we had learned and all the experiences that we got to experience. And it was a lot of fun. Some of the Sometimes when we went into businesses, we just had to look to see who the clientele were and we would hang out at the businesses for an hour. So when it was a restaurant, we got to eat a lot of things. And at least in Casey hadn't tasted a lot of food I had tasted. So mangoladas, pupusas, you know, going to a panaderia, all that was pretty interesting and fun. And it was a lot of new food for them and for myself. But we, we really enjoyed ourselves during this internship. And I got into what I learned previously, so <laughs> thank you for listening.